Hello, I'm at the Play Pine and Pine rehearsal rooms with Alan Bissett, who has done the adaptation of our penultimate play for from the Latin American season. It's the Confidant by Gilberto Pinto, which is a play from Venezuela. Alan, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, adapting a play presents certain challenges. How, yeah. how, how have you thought about it? Well, at first I thought it would be much easier, to be honest, um, because the story's already there, the characters are already there, the shape of it's there, you don't see that, you haven't got that excavation work. Um, but it was much harder than I thought, because um, the original, well, the piece that I got was a literal translation. So, because I speak Spanish, and I had to get somebody else, Mike Gonzalez, I yeah. to translate it. So you have to take that language and make it your own, and then you have to get your own feel for who these characters are and, and their struggle, and try and uh, work in that in a way that you think a Glasgow audience, an or an more audience, a Travers audience, are going to take to. So um, it changed shape slightly, and there was different tonal shifts, and it went through different evolutions. Five drafts. So that's harder than I've ever worked any play ever, and that was with the original source material already there, so yeah, yeah it was tough. And, yeah. and how, how do you find working on a play from Latin America particularly interesting? Yes, actually, because obviously the, um, the political history of that place is, is so fascinating, and uh, when we were workshopping these plays, myself and all the other writers who have been adapting the, the plays were Talking about that, Mike Gonzalez was taking us through the history of, of Latin America, the relationship of the theatre to the people, um, the theatre, the political situation. So you start to feel quite a sense of responsibility. You know, these are not just sort of entertaining these stories. Mm -hmm. These are actually part of a whole people's struggle, a whole continent's struggle mm -hmm. um, against oppression. Mm -hmm. So I think the stakes started to get higher. Mm -hmm. um, but for that reason, that, that's that's all the more reason to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you're forced to look at material, which actually is um, extremely important. I've been quite interested, when I decided to do this season about a place from Latin America, my one concern was would audiences engage with them in the same way that they engage with plays by writers like yourself? Mm -hmm. um, and it's been, a, it's been a great revelation and a great pleasure to find that they have engaged with them. And, and I think there's been a certain I don't know what you call it, added piquancy caused by the invention in North Africa, in, in Egypt and in Libya and in Tunisia. Mm -hmm. Suddenly we're all very conscious of changes happening in these under these repressive regimes. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think it's, it's part of that. And it's also partly because the political situation here, well not obviously those extremes, is, um, is quite intense. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the whole the, the whole culture has shifted, I think, in the last twelve months, and especially since you know um, we put the bastards back in charge. Uh, so I think people can see politics right in front of them every yeah. day. Yes. It's, if it's not affecting them, it's affecting somebody who's close to them. Somebody's yes. losing their job, or somebody's mortgage is under threat, or yes. a vital public service that they depend on is being cut. Yeah. So I think audiences are are, are more inclined to to political material now anyway. But yes. I mean, when I was writing this play. Um, I would get up and, and I had the radio on in the kitchen whenever I went through to make a cup of tea. The latest from uh, Egypt was happening or the latest from Libya was happening and then I would go back to the play and go, right, yes. this is actually now. Yes. Yes. And obviously every country's situation is different, yes. I mean Egypt and Libya, sure, but sure. the revolutions of, of... Going in different directions. Exactly. Yes. Um, but it still felt very permanent, which raised the stakes. I'm quite in interested America. because of because I'm a bit older than you, uh, and I, when I started in theatre, I started in, in what was an intensely political theatre, mm. 784, first of all, no wildcat, and um, then the, there was a change in mood, and, and political theatre became almost taboo, mm -hmm. um, oh, that old hat thing, but it's interesting that people are beginning to respond now mm -hmm. to a much more political theatre than they might have done five years ago. Yeah, I think that's true, um, and I think we will see more of that, or we certainly should, mm -hmm. 
because if we don't, if I think if theatre makers and novelists and poets and filmmakers ignore what's happening right. in this country and in the world, yes. that, that's, that's shameful really. That's not to say everything everybody writes has to be directly addressing no, no. the recession or the financial crisis or capitalism in some way. Um, but if you're not even taking these things into account, uh -huh. well, what are you there for really? And I think um, in Scotland especially, we do have that tradition in, in, in the novel and in theatre. Um, of directly addressing oppression yes. um, and democratic deficits because I think in Scotland we're you know, acutely aware of that and now's the time to bring it back. Absolutely. I'm interested, uh, you, you mentioned novelists and the novel, you are yeah. first and foremost a novelist, that's what, what you make your name as yeah. and uh, indeed you handed in your latest novel today. An hour ago. Pac-Man. 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 Uh, it's a sequel. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, wow. I'm kind of still a bit thrown by it all. I've been writing this book for about three years and uh, the, the first draft of it was turned in today uh, and it's been a quite intense, because when you're near the end of a, a piece of work you speed up and you yeah. can't think about anything else and you can't do anything else. So for the last three or four days I've been in a kind of caffeine and just delirium um, hammering this thing out, so it's nice to come back and inhabit reality again. But if this is in fact reality and not just and I like writing on my part, then this is a superb characterisation here. So, tell me, what was it that, as a novelist, first attracted you to work in theatre? Um, well, partly it was just to do a, a shift of gear, really. The novels are exhausting. The novels are big, big projects, and I've, I've, I've written three of them by the time I started writing in theatre. And theatre is just much more sort of, as a writing experience, more contained and faster, and uh, has its own challenges, but you don't have the gigantic architecture of maybe a 70,000 or a 90,000 word book to hold in your mind all the time. It's, you know, dialogue, 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 dialogue. So I like stripping it out of that, and writing to the beats, and, and, and really kind of um, staring quite intensely at the page for, for a short period. But then you also get a social aspect, which you don't really get if you're a novelist, because you're locked in a room all the time with your wee pretend people. Um, you know, like having your uh, sister's Barbie doll and you get your action man and you're like, I've got to go to war, Barbie. Okay, come. <laughs> no, war's not for girls. Yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> you start to feel like it all goes a bit the shining. Right. Um, whereas theatre's more of a kind of joyous, riotous, um, you know, let's throw this around the room and then go out and get pissed kind of thing. <laughs> so you get to work with other people. Yeah, which is that's, that's the short answer. Right, okay. Yes. <laughs> um, you, you, you've come a long way as a theatre worker in a relatively short period of time. You started with your own, um, The Modern Monologue, mm -hmm. an adaptation of, of some prose writing that, that you developed into the theatre piece, which you perform yourself. Mm -hmm. Then you kind of started writing plays for R and More, yes. original plays for other actors, and you started performing yourself uh, in That's Gregory right. Burke's yeah. play. Yeah, Gregory Burke's Barry Farm, I think, about this yeah. last year, directed by yourself. Yeah, so you, you, you really immersed yourself in theatre. Yeah, I've loved it. I'm really excited by it, actually. It's kind of a lot of fire. Um, inside my, my creative life, and, and that's where well, you go towards the heat. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, the model was, was a way outside of my comfort zone because not only was I writing from the point of view of a woman, but performing as one mm -hmm. and taking it out in tour and all the challenges of, of you know, carrying the whole show yourself. Yeah. And, um, and that went fine. And I've got the final ever performance at the Falkirk Town Hall on the 15th of April. Do um, not miss it. If you haven't seen the Moira monologues, go to Falkirk Town Hall on the 15th of April. It's a riot. Right, that week comes over. Yes. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, doing, doing the Chain Room or more Turbo Folk, they were really well received. Got a great cast. Um, Sasha, um, Kyle did a terrific job with Turbo Folk. Shell did a great job with the Chain Room. So I was really lucky in terms of the people that got involved in, mm -hmm. in the production side of mm -hmm. things. So, um, but I haven't, I haven't written a full-length play yet. Right. There's still time for it all to go right. disastrously wrong. And, and might, there, might there be another 50-minute play lurking somewhere in, in Yeah, the I like that discipline. It feels like going back to writing short stories again. Right. Because I used to write short stories before I became a novelist. Mm -hmm. 
and it's right in the play within the confines of 50 minutes and three actors mm -hmm. um, for a, a lunchtime audience mm -hmm. who, who needs to be engaged pretty quickly. Yes. Um, yeah, that, I, like the, I like the challenge of that and the discipline and the, and the intensity of it. It's, right. it's great. I've had great experiences at Ordinal so far. Good. So. Well, we've had great experiences with Alan's work and we're having a great one just now with his adaptation of The Copy Doll by Gilberto Pinto. And I hope you come and see it next week because it's a very fine piece of theatre. Thanks, Alan. Good morning. Cheers.